pay and do it that way. And But you know what? Let's stop putting all this money into uh, cricket and you know, rugby and AFL, like let's put it into sports that kids are actually, you know, yeah. sure there is big participation rates in those, but it's only because they're but getting I couldn't slammed tell you a down. Single, I couldn't tell you a single cricketer I know. Oh, mate, it's And, and rugby league, we all love it, but basically it's a, I can't watch it anymore because it means I've got to sit in front of the TV and drink beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't it's, sit in front of the TV anymore. But nah. So, well, I don't know, and you, can't, you can't play it until you're... 40? Yeah, well, that, that's you the thing. You bust is, yourself up. So. Exactly right. And that's where these sports, like skating and all of that. Like, I, I'm out skating with older dudes all the time. You know, we had a 50-year-old on the weekend do really well in the contest here at Eleanor for Bolzilla. And that's, that's a crazy place, mate. Oh, yeah, it's fun. We just had the contest there. It was. Did they just build a steps out of it? Or so, like a door to get out of there? Nah, 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 nah. No? Right. <laughs> but they should. <laughs> something. they got to do something. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm getting too old. They'll need wheelchair access for me later. <laughs> oh, is it? So sorry to pause you in that because that that bowls. What's the what's the place called, Eleanor? Eleanor Bowl. Yeah, it's just the craziest, deepest. Oh yeah, well uh, actually, I can't believe anyone funded that. Like from the local. Well yeah, I know how's that, and that was like almost ten years ago that yeah. they funded that. So the most, you can't. Uh, I, but they should have made it deeper. I had to run up. Oh, to get out. Ten meters to get to get out of it. Yeah, they should have made it deeper. Like yeah. it's just a little bit too small for me. Far out. So it kind of freaks me out. So you, you know. do all that stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what... You get high. I I get high, yeah, in that way. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I... um, We built a mega ramp in Victoria. Like, uh, this crazy golfer says to me one day, well, I I always wanted to. I told everyone. Well, first off, I told everyone I'm going to get a vert ramp. And they're like, you're not going to get a vert ramp. This dude, Junior Penne, such a... I'm going to say, he's a kook. Um, But he thinks he's a lot better than what he is at skating. Uh, But kind kind of a nice guy, whatever. He's a bit of a kook. He'll hear this and probably beat me up. He's huge. Anyway, he says, oh, you're not going to do it and, uh, you know, you're full of shit. And I'm like, I'll do it. Anyway, sure enough, I get a vert ramp, 40 feet wide, 12 feet high. And then um, then about two years later, I was like, I'm going to get a mega ramp. But sure enough, he's yeah. the first one to go, oh, you're full of shit. And maybe you're selling, uh, saying it to push me, but he talked mad shit on me. Well, a what's lot of different? People, how, how big's a mega ramp? Mega ramp is about, you know... It's the quarter pipe itself is 24 feet high. And then you jump like a 40-foot gap. And anyway, we did these demos with this crazy golfer called Peter Wilson. And he's like on the uh, Japanese tour and stuff like that. And um, he's, I said to him, look, I'm going to build a mega ramp. I've got all this material and shipping containers. Let's do it. And I was in America and he sends me a text going, look at my land. I've just started putting stumps in. I'm like, dude, you don't know how to build at the stop. He went ahead and built like – as much as he could. And then I put all my, sent my shipping containers there with another friend, Shane. And then we just started building and we had no plans and we had to rebuild it three or four times. It was so frustrating. Pete and I got in so many fights. Like he's like the, one of the craziest, gnarliest dudes in the world. He's an amazing golfer. And Did you say his last name, Pete, Pete Wilson. Okay. Like, but the dude's crazy. Like <laughs> I love him, but he's fucking nuts. He lived in a shed in Niora in the middle of nowhere. And with his family, he's got three kids and his wife. And he's like, I'm going to build this mega ramp for you. And I'm going to build a house under it and you can live in that. And I was like, yeah, okay. i got a family with three kids at that stage too. I don't think my wife's going to approve. And yeah, anyway. It's cold down it's, there. Yeah. Anyway, so we ended up, um, we started building and we built the jump. And you go over the jump and then we had the landing ramp. And then it went flat. And then we just put some pieces of wood up a hill. And uh, we'd do that like over and over again. And um, and I just be one time we didn't nail it down properly, well, screw it down properly at the bottom, and I hit the bottom of the mega ramp. It flipped me to the top of this bank ramp, which is probably about forty feet up. Hit that, and then fell down and smashed my neck. Like I thought I broke my neck. I never really told my wife like how pretty gnarly that was, but I think I. And you're in the middle of nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. So, and one guy he reckons he could do it. His name was uh, Chatty Power Band Man. We called him. He went down, it. and like the guy could barely skate. He went down and tried to jump. As he took off, he kind of looped out, and then he slammed into the back of it. And we had nets there, and we'd got one of our friends, Flaz, had get, given us cricket nets that he'd been given, and we stretched them across there. He falls into the net, so we knew the nets work, which was rad. <laughs> and I said to him, "Move your arms." Is arm. this thing still working now? Like that? Well. Hey, okay. Keep going. Yeah, so he, he, I said, move your arms, and he moves his arms, and I said, move your legs, he moves his legs, and um, I said, all right, no worries, now get the fuck out before I beat you up, and he's like, <laughs> he gets out, and when he stands, his hips all kind of go weird, and he had to go to a hospital, it didn't, he, I think he spent a night in hospital, he was all right, 
but it was gnarly and a few things happened and I kind of tried to step back from it because it was, it was pretty full on. But yeah, so what happened was the neighbour, for, for ages, somebody was always writing these letters to the council job and my mate peed in because he lived in, his, in a shed he, uh, that he converted to a house and he right. needed to have a dwelling on there before he could really okay. be there. So, and he was poor as shit because he wasn't winning on the golf tour and then he finally had a couple of wins made some money and he's built this huge like 70 square home now that overlooks <laughs> the mega ramp and he's got a little golf course there so when you come and do the air out of the top of the quarter pipe you can walk off his green straight onto the top of the quarter pipe it's wow. pretty gnarly but anyway so he went through uh the council the council approved it and then the people these neighbors who was actually her husband was helping us build it um she was complaining and then the neighbours fully put in this thing and went against us and uh, it went to VCAT and VCAT ruled in our favour and then so now we've then put in a submission to move it to another part of the land and now they've approved it. So it's going to be, it's going to be even better. So we've, the guys have all pulled it down now. I haven't really worked on it physically probably in three years but the first probably two years was just like every weekend away. My wife was – that I was home, my wife was off me like bad. She's always like, you went off and did this, you went off and did that, and I was just home looking after the kids. I'm like, well, that's what you wanted to do, wasn't it? That's what we, that was the decision we made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I kind of get a bit of a tune-up about that one all the time. Right. But the guys did an amazing job, man. It's pretty gnarly. So. Well, mate, I can't believe it's been an hour and uh, – oh, five minutes. Hour and five minutes. So, yeah – but Put it there. No worries, yeah. mate. Thanks. Um, uh, tell me what you're into right now. Right now, I'm doing uh, a couple of things. I'm helping the guys at Spent with uh, so that's just spentclothing.com. Uh, get their stuff out there and try and push it a little bit more. Try and make them refocus on what they're good at. I think that I do a lot of consulting consultancy to people. I have got a, another brand called Web, webmofo.com. So it's in webmotherfuckers.com. Right. Dot au. So uh, and that's just kind of. I help, you know, there's so many companies out here that are just ripping people off their SEO and websites. Oh, we'll build your website for 20 grand. It's just like, I kind of come in and I help you build your own and show you what tools to use. And so basically I want people to get smarter and not get ripped off because, you know, people say, we can put you on the first page of Google. But no one can put you on the first page of Google. Yeah. Google can't even promise you'll be on the first page of Google. You can yeah. pay them a million bucks. But that's just the way it is. So that's web and mobile. I had my, uh, sorry to cut you yeah. off. That, that's a very... Um, the amount of calls I get being in the business here from people from all over the world, we put your fr front page of Google, that will never get my business. Even the emails that come in, oh, they never have a phone number on the bottom. I haven't to this day, in, in, and I was doing it for my old man's company, you yep. know, all that Google marketing, online marketing. Yep. I haven't had one guy walk into my office. Oh, serious? So the power of having you yep. on the coast to actually go, I'll sit in front of your desk and I'll just show you, dude. I deal with I think it's a uh, like the maybe the, the younger kids have sort of. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm generalising. No, no, no. You're right. But the importance of actually walking in, shaking a dude's hand, and going, "Hey, how are you? Well, I've been skateboarding for thirty years, and I know a lot about this stuff, man. You could do a lot better." Well, that's the thing. It's and like I'm right here. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Even there is there is companies on the coast that do do that, but they're they're set up as a big business and all they want is your money. They want you 500 bucks a month. You know what I mean? And I just tell to people, tell people like, you don't need to give me $500 a month. I can help you out and tell you what to do right now. And you can work on it. And it's whether you want to work on it or not. If you don't want to work on it, then go and give these guys 500 bucks a month. But it takes six or seven months before you get to that point. You know what I mean? And I think that's the part that people miss because they're like, okay, I've signed up for this thing. But people want results straight away. And I tell people the best way to get results is get on Facebook and get on Insta and just start pushing, get in people's face, get on all the community pages and put it out there. Yeah. So, and then another thing is I got my – And again, going back to what we said before, isn't it surprising how people a lot – you soon realise – some people aren't born like you. I'm a born promoter. Yeah, yeah. I an, I'm probably annoy people with. with oh, I annoy the shit out band of people. Band, you know, like. Oh, your band's sick. The but, Titanic's. That's so rad that you got all those well, posters. Thank you, sir. But I got to come and see you. But guys. I'm a born. That's what I get out of bed and want to tell. There's a show or there's a thing or we're doing this thing at work and this and this. Isn't it surprising when you when you meet some uh, other people? And it's all just how your mind works. Yeah, yeah. Some people just can't promote. You can. I, I think you need a Facebook, you need this and this yeah, and this, yeah. but they never do. They never do. That's right. Like there's a, there's a, 
uh, Park Avenue dancewear, right? My wife's opened a ballet uh, school, so if anyone needs ballet school, go to uh, tweedcoastdanceschool.com.au. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. So, my, so what happens is this chick's got a – my wife went in there and she goes, oh, what's your website like? My, my husband can help you set up. So I've set her whole, whole site, website up and now put her onto a pod system where she can manage her inventory because so many small companies, small places like that, especially the ladies – probably in a just probably getting to her 50s and she she hasn't got all that in place she doesn't know how much stock she has in all of that and i just doesn't went know who to trust too. and doesn't know and i said to her look i'll come in and i'll do it and i said and this is the price and let's just go through it and then all of a sudden then she's like well i've got this other business do you want to do help me with the website for that do you want to help me put how would you do this how and it's like all the tools that are out there it's just people don't know how to do it and people are scared too to go and jump into it and it's just yeah. a matter of giving them that push and coaching them through it and so that's what I do with the web mofo stuff. And then um, I started skateallday.com.au, which is because that's what I want to do with skateboard all day, right? So, right. That, so I fell back in love with skating because I had about a year where I was like so burnt on it. Yeah. And then basically I started skateboard coaching down in the Tweed area at Cabarita after school. And you know how surf groms is after school, yeah. uh, you pay a 10-week thing. Well, no yeah. one had ever set that up in skateboarding. Amazing. So now I've set it up. I've got eight hubs across Australia. That's great. And I've found skaters who I know have got real good skills, really good communicators. All and ages. Or from five to twelve, we're doing right. But what then, about me? Oh, we well, can. We'll it just, is <laughs> Nolly. We'll come. Tell you what, man. Just uh, pause that because I went on. Um, yeah, me and my, I bought. I ended up buying my son a little dark side skateboard. Yeah, went down there and I got out my gas. Great. What is it? Great American. St- Skateboards. Anyway, yeah. it's 19 years old. It made oh, me so cry. GNS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I got my old skateboard and I, with um, Drew Barrymore on the back. Oh, like, shoot. I, I, yeah, and I went, yeah, put some new wheels on it. That's probably worth and a lot of money now. Now it worked out it's worth 19, it's 19 years old. But anyway, I got it out and I, I was frightened to roll into the first little thing. I was never good any good at tricks, man, but I did a lot of st- st- going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight, yeah. Just skating to street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, man, i, I got to tell you, I, I was spent two probably two hours at Chugan. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm 43. I'm telling you this because um, just like you should never give up on your things, right, when you get no. older. No. Nah. I felt so good, man. My body was fluid. You're like, uh, you know, when you're stiff and you're sore, like, oh, my God. And yep. the next minute I did, never came off. But after that day, I was skipping around, man. My felt a million every, All the joints were just moving. It powered that's, me, man. I, I've been back there a few times since. That's so cool. But I, wanted, so- I want my son to do your... Yeah, well, we've actually just started uh, the Gold Coast right now. So um, basically we do Chugans on Monday starting term too. So it's just the whole term, 10 weeks. And like I had kids that had never stood on a skateboard. Parents turn up, here you go. They've got to bring a helmet and a skateboard. But I've got other skateboards as well. They'd bring a penny and I'd be like, oh, yeah, try this skateboard. Right. Kids couldn't even stand on them. I'd get them – within three weeks we got them dropping in, looking around, getting to know all the kids in the skate park too. That's yeah. another really important thing. Yeah. So that it becomes a self-governing community, you know what I mean? You, like everyone looks after everyone and I'd rather people be on skateboards and scooters and stuff like that. So all of a sudden like in the Willenbar, like Cabarita, Cooley and uh, Tweed South, like I've just got all these kids that could barely skate, you know, could barely even push or push strong. And now we've got them skating. And I was just like, hang on. There's all these skaters out there that are, are really good. They're skating every day, but like older kids, and they've done their skate coaching course because Skate Australia went bankrupt uh, last year, last year or the year before. Like, and they've all been left without these like little money earners. And I'm like, well, you know what? Like, you could earn up to twelve hundred dollars a week earning uh, working ten hours. Like, hit me up. Like, so I've hit up these people, and I said, if you earn twelve hundred bucks a week doing ten hours of skating. You'd be pretty stoked, wouldn't you? And the kids are like, yeah. And I said, okay, well, this is it. And I've put a whole package together. I've got all my insurance. I've got everything. I said, you just need to go and get your first aid. You're working with kids, all of that. Your blue card. And now all of a sudden, like, I've got eight hubs. And we're about to go and probably put another three or four on in the next week for term two. Oh, yeah. And they all, we all book through one central place. So I do all the booking. Yeah. I take a little cut. Right, and then they get the rest of the money, and and all their dads. When you think about it, all their dads are guys like me who were in the eighties. I'm bringing this all around, Trevor Ward. You're Bring it right. all around. That's like we, what I you knew. Know, we knew the power of skateboarding. Yep. And yep. You, and basically, you can't be just like surfing. You can't be drunk and get on a skateboard. You 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 know what I mean? There's something. Dude, dudes do get yeah 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 lost in drugs and stuff. But yep. It's the kind of thing that you 
keeps you. We all know a fat mate who never got on a skateboard <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Or, or anything good, and he's still fat. Yeah, yeah. He yep. just doesn't do anything. Like, well, I was I was putting it on because I barely skated for a year, and I just was so over it. I just didn't want to see it. I'd take my kids skating and that, and I'd have a skate, and then like one. 